Thanks for staying with us. Now we're having in the show Honorable Barrister Sergius Ogubu joining the conversation. Um, he's a member House of Representatives and um, he has 25 years cognitive experience in oil and gas industry. So he's the right person to give us some insight into this new branding that the NNPC has undergone. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Hi, good morning. Good to Thank have you, you on the show. So, and NPC shut down the social media yesterday because they were unveiling, um, telling us they're now privatized, they're going to become commercial, um, that they're no longer going to be responsible to us in paying subsidy. What does that mean? And what does this new NNPC, uh, what does this new commercializing of NNPC mean for the Nigerian people? Well, I think it's a right step in the right direction and i congratulate nigerians for this but i as much as we are excited about uh the new nfpc or rather the nfpc limited uh some of us are a bit uh, skeptical about the way it's been put together uh yesterday when the minister of state petroleum was speaking he said something about we've lost over 50 billion usd because of the delay in passing this bill and then he also said something about in the last five years 70 billion usd has been invested in africa only four percent of that came to nigeria again because we had not taken a position on on the pia but now we have the bill but there are still so many questions we need to ask like you rightly said now is our company it says owned by Nigerians, over 200 million Nigerians. We have invested over 200 billion in NNPC. We, it's something like the Nigerian constitution. We, <laughs> when did we sit down to agree mm. there's going to be 200 billion? You know, and uh, there are so many things that uh, we need to look at. But like I said, now there's a limited liability. Foreigners, investors will have confidence because the problem with NNPC in the past as really, it's not the individuals that work there. It's actually the government, mm. their interference, the new management of NNPC before it now transited to NNPC Limited, headed by Meleke Ari. Solid. From 2019, they started auditing their books. You know, we had the, their audited financial statement published on their site, you know, for 2019 and 2020. But what happened? We don't have one for 2021 right now, you know? So going in, going forward, as a limited liability, we need to be. They need to be more transparent so that people will know what they are doing. There are so many things they did in the past that will take time for people to begin to believe or to ever believe that they can possibly change. Because okay. we still have the footprint of government all over them, all right. over this NPC limited. Mm. So I wanted to ask, sir, what, um, you know, going further to what this change means, are we going to be expecting like a name change, personnel change, or are we still going to be expecting them to work with the same personnel that they've had? What does it really mean when you say you are moving from, you know, being government owned to privatization? It's just that right now is a karma, uh, is a, is a limited liability company, it's a public company. So it's going to be regulated under the laws, karma, you know? So it's not like a corporation that they are accountable to the government. They are not accountable to the public and the laws, the karma laws, you know? So that is the major thing. But what I was saying earlier, you still have the footprint of government all over, like the first part of your question. Nothing has changed. Oh. The law allowed them to continue with the with their workers even their appointments like section 59 section 58 of the act says there shall be a board section 59 listed enumerated those that should be on the board and should be appointed by the president it's supposed to be a public company you know so look at the shareholding ministry of petroleum incorporated ministry of finance incorporated it's still government Mm. Directors in these ministries will represent the government on the board. It's still government. You know, if you want to run it like a public company, they should be able to hire. I cannot tell you, sit down here and tell you that 99% of the people working in NNPC today mm. went through the usual procurement system that you see in the private sector. Mm. In the private sector, you get the best of the best. 
But I'm not sure that's what happened in NFTC or that's what is happening in NFTC or happened in NFTC in the past. So you are going to carry all these workers into the new company and expect magic. Mba, no. So, okay. I, okay. Because I, I, I was, that was going to bring me to my next question. This sale of NMPC or this transfer of M NMPC to the private sector, is, how is that going to relate in fuel in the, in the <laughs> filling stations? Are we going to have no queues? Will there be fuel yafun yafun now? <laughs> or will we still be queuing like we are doing to get fuel? Okay, uh, those are the things we are, we are probably today now, the speaker at about now will be inaugurating the committee on subsidy. And that was a motion moved by me. So you guys are actually the ones keeping me here. I should be in that meeting right now where the speaker will be inaugurating the committee. We are asking questions of the NNPC and NNPC Limited. We need to be, need to be more transparent now, you are talking about the pump price of petrol. We know, I think they use about 162 to 168. That's what NNPC uses as transfer price to DP, to NA, PPMC. But why was pump price about one, 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 six, or was 167 or something? Okay, where I'm going to hear, there's a difference of about 37 to 37, 37 to 39 Naira difference from the pump transfer price from NNPC to PPMC. Okay, now I'm sure aware, most of us woke up yesterday or the first day, there's a new increase right now. We need to know the landing costs. We need to, to know movement from where the vessel that brings the product, you know, bets in offshore Lome, and then the mother, the daughter vessels come to take, and then empty into the tank farm. We need to know all that so that we know whether there are wastages along the line. You can't just wake up and tell us, you are paying subsidy of X, Y amount of money. How did we get there? In the first case, we are doing trade by barter. There's a 445,000 uh, liter, sorry, uh, barrels of crude oil. We are using to trade this refined product. That 445,000 barrels belong to the Federation, you know, okay. that they are supposed to sell. We're supposed to give to the refineries, local refineries, but because we don't have the refining capacity right now, we are trading it for refined product. So if we are doing trade by butter, you know that why are we still paying so much in subsidy? We are using uh, royalty oil. We are using tax oil. We are using uh, JV revenue, all for subsidy. So these are questions we are going to be asking. All right, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with you, sir. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, please, sir. They said that you're looking at the um, TV, sir. You should look at us. Hello, sir. Okay. Please, you look at yes. I'll look at the pretty lady. On TV, okay. I'm not looking here. Okay. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guest with us, Honorable Sergius Ogo. Talk about a question for him. So, um, uh, Honorable, for a long time, we've all been excitedly waiting for this to happen because we've seen the way... Um, with Brazil, Petronas is very successful. We've seen the way with Saudi, um, Aramco is very successful. So I was looking forward to this, like, an NPC might work. But from the questions you've raised, you've raised the Nigerian factor. So are you saying that when we're creating this NNPC Limited, we were not following the policies or the framework for other people that have done this, like Aramco and... Um, um, Petronas, is it going, are we following, did, did we follow that model or do you think that there's some things wrong? And it's surprising that you being at the House of Assembly, that you, you were part of those that probably would have, should have read the laws creating this thing, you will still have questions. Then I am confused. Well, I, I'm not just a member of the House of Rep, beside my experience in the industry, I was also a member of the ad hoc committee set up for this bill. We went through a whole lot. But, you know, at the point we were just desperate to put out this, this bill or this law. We were desperate to make it happen. And like, even then, some people said, even if we had brought a piece of paper 
and say this is the bill the president was ready to sign. So there was desperation on both sides, on the part of the uh, legislators and the executive to make sure we bring this out because we were really behind. The world had moved on without Nigeria, you know? But like I said, we raised these issues. I personally raised the issue of why are we not selling shares to the public? Look at uh, the, I think it was sometime last year, the president spoke glowingly about um, LNG, NLNG, how that the workforce is about 95% Nigerian, and yet they are doing very well, you know, pay dividend to the country and all. But what he didn't say there, or what you might not know, is that the board of NLNG controls NLNG, and they are largely foreigners. Uh. Shell, Total, Ajib. Shell has 25%, Total has uh, 15%, and then uh, Ajib has uh, 10%. So, and Nigerian government has 49%. So we are minority shareholders there. And I said it there, that look, what I would prefer is to have a system where NHP, in NHPC, the Nigerian state will be, will be minority shareholders. So that investors will be the majority shareholders. So in that way, you run it like a business. Not when you have a, now you have appointed uh, uh, board members. It doesn't espouse a whole lot of confidence in the members they have, they have appointed there in the board. If you are a private sector company or if you're a public uh, company and I want to buy shares into that company, the first thing I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at the board. Oh, Who are yeah. the people running the show? True. So if I don't yeah, see solid appointees. names there or people with, um, you know, Integrity. with solid background, I'll probably not invest in it. Okay, let me ask you this question. So we did ask. Yeah. Let me, so, this, Nigerians are still asking because the, one, of the th one of the high points of yesterday's unveiling was the fact that NNPC would no longer be the one to be paying subsidy. And the question Nigerians are asking, so who that is? is? And if it's federal government, where is federal government going to get the money, money from? I mean, how, what, how do you think this is going to play out? Since you're in the National Assembly, maybe you have an insight to us on how this would work out. Uh, going forward, what we had actually said in the bill, within one year of um, Nigerian NNPC Limited coming to being, there will be no more subsidy. And then, but NNPC Limited will be the net importer of petroleum products if there's any need, which means the Nigerian nation will have to apply to NNPC Limited to say, we need you to help us import petroleum products. But I think that was has been extended now to about two years. So they will still pay subsidy. But the question everyone is asking, what are we really subsidizing? Mm. We are not saying there is no subsidy, but what are we subsidizing? If you say we are doing trade by butter, I like your phone and you like my phone, or let's trade it. What's the difference? But the difference we are paying in cash <coughs> is than... too much. So we need to know how much we are paying First, we need to know the quantity we are consuming. As a nation, what NNPC used to post on their website, you know, is uh, our daily import is supposed to be about 63 million liters per People day. Do. Daily Many import. Cars. So how can somebody not tell you you are importing 63 million liters per day and you are consuming 103 uh, million liters? So where the difference, the difference is? It, did, you store, did you store it virtually? <laughs> Did you store it virtually? Do you have storage capacity? So these are questions we are asking. I mean, we are just we are we are asking questions. We have we are not accusing anybody of anything yet. So we need to know what we are subsidizing before we go into the issue of who is paying. But for now, I but think maybe they now that, they're, that they're not commercially, maybe now they can give us the books. We can now they, we can now see. But let me take this call uh, from Oweri. Let me take this call from Oweri. Good morning, sir. Praise, you're live. Oh, well, I'm sorry I lost that so call. Talk about it. No, but seriously, because they have to be sharing, because we are shareholders, mm. 200 well, million Nigerians are shareholders, the, they have to be giving us the book every month. No, no, to be looking I'm not at. honorable. Someone that is honorable in the head of committee that is overseeing, that, over, that put together this bill, is asking questions like me. I'm confused because I'm surprised that they are asking these questions. I feel like you should have this information. These are things that everybody, sh that you should be informed. I'm debated. It should have been, it should have been a clear, um, um, this book should be made clear. Why are we doing this? Why are we spending this money? These are things, information that we should have. That's one. Number two, sir, I am worried at your, um, your 
your desire for us to have foreign partners manage our resources because it speaks to the fact that we don't trust ourselves. And That's do you understand? Because every time, every company in Nigeria, they will go and bring India, they bring Uyimbo to come and manage it because we want to be successful. Is it that we, Nigerians cannot manage Nigeria? And to the extent that someone of your caliber is saying you would have been more comfortable if Nigeria had a minor stake and was handled by the Oyimbos. Yes. It's not money, it's investors. We don't have the money. So the investors will bring in the money. Mm. We used to have majority stake in NLNG. Mm. I think it was the Abacha era. There was additional money required, and we didn't have that money. We, we gave, we shared, we Share had to share some time. shares. That's how the foreigners became majority shareholders. So we are not looking for foreigners to come and manage it. We are saying they bring should bring money. in their money. Okay. So if you bring in your money, of course, you will follow it. So can't get my drift. Okay, I if get it's you. the Nigerian government, the Nigerian government will interfere unnecessarily. Right. That has been the problem with mm. NNPC. Right. So going forward with a limited liability, now we don't want the government interference anymore. Exactly. It should run like a private company. All right. That's the point okay. I'm making. Point taken. So yes, that means okay, uh, Mele Kiari shouldn't even be there. They should appoint a proper managing director. And the directors are still ministers who are appointed okay. by the president. Yeah, that, that even brings to my question, because I wanted to ask, now that we still have directors that are typically government, do you see any body language that they are trying to do this right the way a private organization should run? Or do you feel it's just trying to, because I wouldn't want to say elections are coming, it's just like a diversion so that we think that something is happening, but nothing will happen. Well, it has to remain like this for now. That's why I said earlier that some of us raised the issue that now that we are going, it should go public, you know? It should be on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. You should go to New York Stock Exchange and all that. You know, you should get the public to buy shares, get investors to buy shares, so that the Nigerian government will be minority shareholder. You know, those are those were things we suggested. But they said it's not the time. But we ah. ought to be asking now, when, when? is time? Mm. Because you have been told that the 200 uh, billion uh, Naira invest, dollars invested is our money. Belongs to all of us. Okay, now, who are those holding the, the shares for us? Minister of Petroleum Incorporated, uh, Finance Incorporated. They are holding it on our behalf. <coughs> so they have directors appointed in the board. The government appoints six people from the six geopolitical uh, zones. So it's still government. So they tell us when they are going to sell shares to the public and to investors. That's when the investors will come in and begin to call the shots. As long as it remains government holding shares on our behalf, it's going to remain like this. Hmm. Interesting. Let me give you comments on social media. Any, any questions for us? Uh, um, so lots of comments. So I mean, let me, let, me, let, me, let me come from this perspective, especially for the, the role of the Ministry of Finance in all of this. We know they've actually been working very closely with the NNPC. How do you think this relationship is going to work? Are they, going, are they completely handing over totally? Or do they still have some kind of influence with this new arrangement? Of course, they are going to have influence, a lot of influence, because the Minister of Finance is supposed to work with the Minister of Petroleum. Uh, on the assets, you know, to know the assets, the toxic assets that will be left with uh, NNPC, that's the old NNPC now. Mm. Because you cannot be setting up a new company and you are you're budging that company with, uh, with liabilities, you know. Right. So the Ministry of Finance will have a lot of in, uh, influence for now. And that's what we're also saying. So if you have the Ministry of Finance having influence there, so if you want to hire somebody, if you want to recruit somebody into NNPC Limited, all you need to do is talk to the Minister of Finance to say, look, hey, I, can you help me with this contract there? Or can you help me get somebody employed in here? And it will happen. So they will completely get the government out of that place and let them be minority shareholders. I think we'll still be, still be chasing shadows. Like I, mean, I said, look at the example of NLNG. Independent can speak glowingly about it. What is happening there? We should replicate it in NNPC Limited. Right. I believe it will happen, but it might take time. Let me take this call from Hassan. Hassan, are you there? Hello, Hassan, you're live. Go ahead, please. Okay. 
I have a personal a, a question that I would like you to give uh, your personal views. Um, a lot of people have said that uh, Nigerians are really not uh, meant to be leaders in the sense that, you know, we always say that when Nigerians go outside the country where the systems are working, they do exceptionally well because they are not the ones heading the systems. So for in, my, in this case, would it be wrong for a foreign, uh, foreign nationals to, you know, handle NMPC, at least to get it to a level for the growth of the uh, country, so to speak? Because even in advanced countries, even in Dubai, we have people who are from other nationals handling some specific um, Sector. um, sectors, just as, as long as the goal is to ensure that there's progress in the country. Should, shouldn't we be looking in that direction as well? No, we have the expertise to manage it. And it's not right to say uh, Nigerians, uh, when they are overseas, that uh, they, they, they don't manage things. No, we ha I can tell you so many companies I know oil and gas companies in the Western world, US, um, in the UK, that are being managed by Nigerians. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about the big oil service companies from Halliburton to Schlumberger what to Baker system? and all. Mm -hmm. Not just in Nigeria, even out there, you know, being managed by Nigerians. Nigerians are top, either VP, you know, of global company that has, uh, has, uh, that has worth uh, billions of dollars. You have Nigerians up there. So I think from where you, the question, where you started it from is what we should be looking at. Nigerians don't excel here because of the system. Mm -hmm. And as we have been saying, we need to build strong institutions. Okay. If you have strong institutions that you don't have unnecessary interference, the system that will check itself, most mm -hmm. of these things will not happen. So people can excel. That's why Nigerians go abroad and they excel, whether they are heading the organization or they are working under somebody, because there's a system. Mm. Now, we are talking about NHPC Limited. We are carrying everybody that used to work in NHPC mm. over to NHPC Limited. At least that's what the law says. Mm. The act creating this uh, NHPC Limited. So the good, the bad, the ugly will be there. Let me ask you this it's question, sir. Yes. Because, you see, I get criticized a lot because people think that I try to see things from the government's perspective. But the truth is that we Nigerians are used to subsidized things. You know, when something goes private, so for example, let me use the discos, the electricity, for example. The discos are complaining that they're not, they're not, uh, have, they have this, um, what's the thing they call this tariff? Um, they're not cost reflective. Tariff. 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 Yeah. They're having issues with that cost reflective tariff because Nigerians want to pay a certain amount. Many people are complaining that it's too high, they can't pay for electricity but they want electricity. So they're having their issues because they're not earning back what they invested. So we, are, we, we like things done affordably. We don't, you know, because we, obviously Nigeria is quite poor. Many, many people are poor here. Mm. So we like to subsidize what we used to pay fuel in a certain way. If we continue to invite the private sector to take over critical sectors like this, is the reality that we're going to be paying way more, not just for electricity, but we are few. Do you think Nigeria is ready? Because if this indeed happens, mm. and it's not government saying, ah, because right now we're here waiting for the official uh, pump price. If this happens, there's something like official pump price. It's a private company that is handling, it's based on, do we think Nigerians are ready for this international, this commercialized version of NNPC? Is it possible? <laughs> Well, what you are talking about commercializing NHPC, you are, you are just looking at the downstream. You are looking at the PMS alone. Don't forget that kerosene has been, has been deregulated. Jets, fuel has been de deregulated. Diesel has been deregulated. It's really the PMS, you know? So when you are talking about commercializing NHPC, we have, we have upstream. You have the shares belonging to the Federation, where some of the companies divested. Those shares were moved to MPDC, which is, the, again, government NHPC. So... There's deregulation everywhere, everywhere in the world. In the Western world, agriculture is, is, uh, is sorry, subsidy. Agriculture is, is uh, subsidized, subsidized, greatly subsidized. And like someone said the other day, China, most of the things you use here that are cheap, the government subsidizes them so that they can bring them here and take over the markets. So there's subsidy everywhere. Talking about the discos, I think they also have a lot to do, although the government's leg in the disco is also a big challenge. The discos want to give you estimated billing. If they will provide you with lights and you say, okay, they say, do what's it called, uh, pay as you go. 
you know, as you do on your phone. If you buy credit and your credit runs out, like it like happens in the Western world, you are not going to be complaining. It becomes expensive, but it's available. Same thing with your phone. You don't say that MTN or Glow or any of the networks will cut off your, you will use it. So you run out of credit. So if you don't want to run out of credit, manage it. So the challenge is not so much that Nigerians are complaining about the tariffs. The challenge is that it's not even available. So you don't give me that for two hours, and then you send an estimated bill of uh, how much to me. Let it be available first. If it's expensive, we will know how to manage it. OK. All right, thank you so much, sir. I think it was a, we can wrap up on this with you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and for shedding some light on this new change. We'll continue to monitor it, as you said. They're giving themselves two years to do the full transition. We'll see how that happens. But um, the business said something earlier that I hope this is not just a <laughs> pancake towards mm, 2023. Yeah. Everybody's just trying to, just, you know, they are talking to ASU. They're giving ASU mm. riot act All of after one or something days. Yeah, now it's just now that they're not giving them to be wise. So we, we see a lot of, you know, pancaking well, here and there. But, gone, should that be well, this? Yeah, right? Well, we see <laughs> they need to gather the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any comments on social media before we run off? Yes, just so, general. Um, Someone, my question is, if one of the solutions regarding this sector is using proper directors from private sector, public sector, why wasn't this suggested earlier? Because this is more like medicine after death. The law has been passed. Um, Professor Sakiboyewa says it is colonial mentality to suggest we bring foreign foreigners to head our oil sector. Nigerians are highly educated and motivated people. Well, you already corrected it you that corrected it is it. Investors, investors that we need their funds. Um, so Niger says subsidies protect Nigerian industrial base. Subsidies to protect Nigerian industrial base is positive. Mm. What is terrible is the toxic subsidies like fuel subsidies. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Mr. Sakim says NMPC Limited has a future, but it must address a lot of fundamental issues such as performance if it, if it must be different from the old NMPC. Right. The board must also embrace new ideas, access to capital, cost efficiency, collaboration and innovation. Emmanuel says, ordinarily, NNPC Limited should pretend financial transparency and open up the opaque system covering sleaze at the cesspool NNPC corporation. But this is Nigeria, not any ordinary place. <laughs> With full federal government ownership, still yeah. NNPC Limited and corporation is no more than six and half a dozen. Ah, wow. interesting. Well, that's an interesting way to end. Mm -hmm. But I think in summary, um, our pump price has been reviewed. Uh, so we know exactly what we should be paying uh, per liter, and uh, we'll wait to see what, how Nigerians react to this. And with this new NNPC... Um, limited. NNPC Limited. We're hoping that indeed Nigerians can see, because as, as, the, as um, the Honorable said, it's not just about the downstream. There are two layers, the upstream and downstream. So either way, Nigerians are more usually more concerned about the downstream, because that's what they feel. But the ownership sometimes also helps in what happens to the company. So that's what he was saying, that we can see from the NLNG... A model yeah. and it will work eventually but how soon will that be time will tell that's all we can take on the show for today see you tomorrow bye for now